Today we're gonna to talk about tuna, particularly canned tuna. And we know canning is always a way to preserve things for a long time. And canning tuna in particular is a fairly old technique and it gained popularity during World War II as a way for soldiers to have a protein packed meal wherever they were. And when the war was done, everyone came home and, and tuna salad became an American staple. But when I was young, tuna salad grossed me the out. You know what I mean, that wet, soggy, disaster of a mess that you see in a lot of delis? And the smell. My mom opened a can of tuna when I was a kid. I'd have to bomb that kitchen to get rid of that smell. But when I was 16, my first job at a 19th hole restaurant at my local golf course that actually made pretty great food. It's where I got the inspiration for my chili recipe and my pasta salad recipe. And the old chef back in the day, Carlos, made a great tuna salad and he showed me how to do it. And today we're taking inspiration from that. To make probably the greatest tuna melt your beautiful face has ever eaten. And we're gonna do it in six quick and easy steps, so let's just jump right into it. Step one, finding a better tuna. Now this is an old brand you might have seen. It, it is wild caught, it is held in water, and it is on the cheaper side of tuna. And tuna can go from cheap to quite expensive. But if we're talking about tuna in a world of fishery that is rife with abuse and sketchy behavior, it's a messy supply chain. I'm not sure why I would want to go for the lowest common denominator. When I eat fish at home, I don't go get the cheapest fish that's available. I go get great quality fish and I maybe just don't eat it every day. And when I do, make sure I get the best. And that's my same philosophy when buying something that's canned or jarred. And the universal truth of life is that you get what you pay for. And it looks like cat food to me. There's no texture, maybe a few chunks here and there. It's watery and watery usually dilutes flavor. This is not something I wanna use, I'm sorry. I know maybe the point of tuna is a cheap meal, but I'm a pass on that. Instead, I'm gonna use this. This is some really good quality tuna packed in olive oil that you can actually see the chunks. There's texture, it's firmness. These will crumble, but they won't flake off into oblivion. I'm also gonna use this can of tuna. This is another high quality tuna. You can see, still very high quality, not falling apart. I'm really kind of just using this as well because I want to present it in the jar a little bit. So you don't need to get the two different ones. Just find a good quality one you like and use that one. So just drain the tuna of any oil that they're packed in and then discard the oil and get the tuna into a bowl and start to break up the chunks. And just like a good crab cake, right? You've got some of the lump crab meat along with some of the smaller pieces of crab that help bind it. And that's sort of what we're going for here. I like some nice chunks here that'll inevitably get more broken up as we mix everything together. But then I've got some nice flex that act as a binder that's gonna keep this whole mixture together without it being too wet. We're gonna set this off to the side and it leads us to our second tip, which is adding more crunch in the form of texture of some raw vegetable. So I've got one celery stalk. I probably need, probably add most of this carrot and maybe a half or a quarter of this onion. And I choose red onion just for the color. That much should be fine. We just want a really fine dice. So I'm gonna take a couple cuts horizontally on the onion and then a lot of very thin cuts along the curvature of the onion. Then you can just turn it and run your knife through it to cut these really nicely, finely diced pieces of onion and get them into the bowl. For the celery, I'm gonna take one stalk, cut it in half and then cut it into these little thin sticks. Then bundle them together and cut them into a small dice. We want texture, but we don't want these pieces too big and get them into the bowl. Now for the carrot, I like to cut them in half where they begin to taper. Then in half again for more manageable pieces. Cut a flat edge on one side, lay it down, and then cut these quarter inch planks. The size of these will dictate the size of the dice. Then lay the planks down, cut them into these little sticks, much like the celery, bundle them together, and then cut them into a small dice, then into the bowl. Hit everything with a little bit of salt and get it all mixed together. And this leads us into our third tip, which is using the right amount of mayo, a little less mayo, and using more acidity to cut the richness of this dish. So I'm gonna start with about a half cup of mayo. To that I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of spicy brown mustard, the zest of one lemon, and then two cheeks of lemon juice. And then we're just gonna stir it all together. Basically, we're looking for a certain consistency. And worst case scenario, we want it to be a little too dry so that if we need, we can add a little bit more mayo. But what we're trying to avoid is it being too wet. So we're just gonna go ahead and mix it all together and then make our judgment. See how it starts to form a shape like that? Holds together, but there's not like a ton of moisture at the bottom. It's making that nice noise, but it's not dry. And you still get flecks and chunks of that tuna, even though it's broken up. But this just looks delicious. 
See, it should be moldable. Taste it and then adjust the seasoning. And then this is our fourth step, which is temperature control. A tuna melt is a play of two temperatures, the hot bread and melted cheese mixed with a cool, refreshing tuna salad. So what we're gonna do is let this rest, let the flavors develop, and it for it to chill in the refrigerator until we're ready to use it for the sandwich later. Now, while the tuna chills, we can talk about the fifth step, which is picking the right bread. Now, you might wanna go get like some nice real crusty bread at the store, but I'd like to use actually a good quality classic American white bread. This is a pure Americana sandwich and to pair it with anything other than classic white bread seems a little bit crazy to me. And this particular brand is one that I actually like. That tuna salad is a soft mixture. And so if we were to have some overly crusty bread, since we are toasting it as a melt, when we go to bite into it, I don't want all the contents to shoot out. Soft bread like this, is going to toast up, but there's going to be a tenderness to it, an ability for our teeth to bite through the crust without much force so that everything inside stays inside. Of course, you can use whatever bread you want. This is sort of how I like it. And with that is going to be two slices of cheese that are gonna go on one side. If you really like cheese, you can add to both sides, but I think it overpowers the tuna. Two slices up top is just a nice creaminess that it adds. And then the final step is going to be additional flavor and texture. Some flavor and texture we're gonna add in the form of cherry peppers. They're gonna go right on top of the sandwich. And then on top of that for some additional texture, I saw an article recently from the New York Times referencing how Kenji Lopez does, which is basically adding potato chips to every tuna salad sandwich. He says it makes it better. I'm not gonna argue with that. I'm a big fan of adding chips to the sandwich. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that with some salt and vinegar Cape Cod chips. However, what I've learned from adding chips to a sandwich is when you add them whole, they have a propensity to kind of cut the inside of your mouth. So what I'm gonna do is make them a crumb and sprinkle them on top before closing the sandwich. So I'm just gonna fill up a Ziploc bag. That's perfect. Now you see, we got a nice tuna salad here. It's nice and chilled, really nice balance of acidity, good quality tuna flavor, and the crunch of the vegetables is really nice. So we'll set this off to the side. In a cast iron pan, or in my case today, I'm using my griddle flat top, which is my new toy for sandwiches like this. Get it nicely preheated on medium heat and then place the two pieces of bread down to toast dry. I'm gonna borrow from my grilled cheese method. Once we get a light toast on one side, flip the pieces of bread and smear the lightest layer of mayo on top. Then flip it back so that the mayo side can brown and now we have a light toast on the inside of the bread which is all I want. We can place the cheese on one side of the bread and we're basically looking to brown the exterior of the bread and melt the cheese. I tend to move the pieces around just so we can ensure an even brown all over the bread and the purpose of the mayo is to form a nice brown crust similar to butter would provide without the soggy greasiness that butter often provides. Once the bread is well browned and the cheese is softened and melty I can take the hot bread and place them on a wire rack to make sure I don't lose the texture on the bread which should should be crispy but tender and then we can assemble the sandwich. I'm gonna use a cup measure to scoop out one cup of the tuna salad and place it on one side of the bread, the one without cheese. Then I'm gonna compact it and spread it out so that the tuna is edge to edge on the bread. Then on top of the tuna is one layer of the cherry peppers. Then on top of that, a healthy sprinkle of the chips. Then close it up. And like I said, I had a vision of packing the tuna back into the can. So I'm gonna do that really quickly. And then we can slice the sandwich up. And now you can enjoy the best spicy tuna crunch melt you've ever had. You can taste the acidity, the crunch from the potatoes that also have salt and vinegar on them. The spiciness from the cherry peppers. All of these things come together to create a tuna sandwich like you've never tasted before. Recipe's gonna be down in the description. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Go feed yourself.